Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology, the AQA specification, focusing on variation and evolution, and in particular, on cloning. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on cloning. So in today's tutorial, we'll have a look at some methods of plant cloning then have a look at some methods of animal cloning and also come on to look at the advantages and disadvantages of this. So first of all, let's have a look at some general methods of plant cloning. So we have tissue culture, which involves growing new genetically identical plants from parts of a parent plant. So these plants are called X plants. So all it is is the X plant, so these parts of parent plant are removed from the original plants. They are then put into sterile agar jelly which contains all the nutrients to grow and the samples eventually grow into plantlets and these plantlets they are currently still in the agar jelly which contains all of the essential nutrients but these plantlets are now ready to be placed in compost which is nutrient rich in order to aid growth and these will eventually grow into genetically identical plants. So the idea is that the offspring are ge exactly genetically identical to the parent plant. Now that was tissue culture, so let's move on to another method of plant cloning, which is referred to as cuttings. So using cuttings is an older, easier method of producing plants from the parent plant. So all that happens is that certain parts of the plants are removed, including the branches, leaves and tips. The stem is then replanted in compost, the plant hormones are added to the compost to encourage growth. Also, the compost that is used to plant the cuttings must be damp to allow access to water for the plant. So this method is often done by gardeners and does not require a sterile agar medium as we saw with tissue culture. It's a much simpler method. Okay, so now let's have a look at how we might clone animals. So embryo transplantation produces genetically identical offspring and is done via transplanting embryos to numerous hosts. So it's quite a common process. So first of all, we have fertilisation. So sperm is taken from one animal and an egg is taken from another. We then undergo a process called artificial insemination. So normally the sperm and the egg are fused together and that process is known as fertilisation. But here we're doing this artificially, so that's why we refer to it as artificial insemination. We then, so following artificial insemination, we then get the development of embryos. So the zygote, which is the sperm and the egg that have been fertilised, so fused together, they are then allowed to develop into embryos. We can then remove the embryos from the animal from the uterus of the inseminated animal. And we then split the embryo apart to form smaller cells. So this process must take place before specialization. So remember, this is the process in which cells develop into different types of cells. So this is done at a very, very early stage of the embryo. And we can then transplant all of these separate embryos into host mothers. So these embryos will all be genetically identical to one another, and so will be clones of each other, but also clones of the original. So just to summarise, that's our process there. OK, so now let's move on to adult cell cloning. So in adult cell cloning, an, an adult cell's nucleus is used to replace the nucleus in an egg cell. So adult cell cloning has been around for around 20 years now. And the first ever mammal was cloned in Edinburgh in 1996. And I'm sure you've all heard Dolly the sheep being mentioned on and off. So the process for adult cell cloning to produce dolly is shown on the next slide. So first of all, we take an egg cell from the udder and we remove the nucleus from the unfertilized egg cell. 
So you can see that happening here. So we've removed the nucleus from the unfertilized egg cell. An adult body cell is then removed from the skin and the nucleus is removed from this adult cell, so we call that enucleation. So this process of removing the nucleus from the adult skin cell is called enucleation. Then the adult nucleus is inserted into the egg cell and an electric shock stimulates the egg cell to divide to form an embryo. So the embryo develops into a ball of cells and the embryo is inserted into the, into the womb of an adult female to continue its development. So we have this process of enucleation here where we've removed the nucleus from the um, skin cell. We have this artificial fusion by an electric shock. We have our embryo and that's then inserted into the womb. So remember a cell without a nucleus is called an enucleated cell and we end up producing a clone of the adult sheep. So the reason why we need the egg cell is because egg cells have the ability to develop and divide and to form an embryo, whereas adult cells cannot do that. So we don't see our skin cells forming embryos, do we? No, because that only happens in egg cells. But the reason we need the adult skin cell is because we are producing a clone of that adult. Okay, So we take the skin cell from the sheep that we want a clone of, but we use the egg as kind of like an empty shell in order to allow for development of the embryo. Because remember, the egg is enucleated. We take away the nucleus of the egg. And also make sure you know that the embryo is inserted into the womb of the mother. So let's have a look at some advantages and disadvantages of adult cell cloning. So cloning can produce animals that are primed to produce required proteins for the body. So as clones are produced, they will have the exact genetic information as the parent cell, so the required characteristic can easily be chosen. Endangered species can also be cloned in order to increase the population and then can breed to continue growing animals. So you can see why adult cell cloning might be useful here. However, there are disadvantages, so as always, it's a difficult process and requires lots of intense effort. Also, similar to what we were looking at with GM crops and GM animals, as we produce genetically identical organisms, there is an increased risk of producing the genetic variation, which is dangerous if there's a disease or a change in the environment. And that's because it reduces the number of alleles present in the population. So we refer to that as the gene pool. So the gene pool is basically the number of alleles in the population. We're reducing the size of that by creating more of the same or identical organisms. And therefore, this can lead to an increase in the incidence of genetic disease when we come to reproduction. So there are also ethical queries. So are humans playing God by cloning? And will the cloning of animals finally transition into the, into the cloning of humans? Will we start to make designer babies, for example, by selecting characteristics that we want in our children? How ethical is this? So you can see that ethics is very much a grey area here. And that's why cloning and any kind of genetic modification is currently kind of held back a little bit because we have this whole ethical dilemma on the other side what will that make our future world if we can then go on to genetically alter our babies? So make sure you learn these advantages and disadvantages because you might be asked to evaluate adult cell cloning. And if you know these, it's really, really simple marks that you can get. So let's have a look at some practice questions. So I'll go through these statements. You can then pause the video, have a go, and we'll go through the answers. So A, Dolly the sheep was an example of embryo transplantation. B. Adult cell cloning reduces genetic variation in the population. C. One form of animal cloning is called tissue culture. And D. A cell without a nucleus is called enucleated. Okie dokie. So, pause the video. You've had a go at the statement. So, let's have a look at some answers. So, A. Dolly the sheep was an example of embryo transplantation. No, this is actually false. So a little bit of a tricky one here. So Dolly the sheep was actually adult cell cloning. So this is different from embryo transplantation, okay? So make sure you understand the difference between these two processes. So Dolly the sheep was an example of adult cell cloning.
B, adult cell cloning reduces genetic variation in the population. Yes, this is very true. That's one of its disadvantages. C, one form of animal cloning is called tissue culture. That's false. That's an example of, for, of um, plant cloning. And D, a cell without a nucleus is called enucleated. Yes, this is true. Okay, so well done for today. That's all our specification points covered. And I will see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.